So far, we did a single object minding with respect to the UI. What if we need to represent multiple number of objects into the UI at once? I mean to say, we need to represent collection in the UI. Then how do we go and represent it? So to show that, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add one Windows number three, that is WPF window. And then we'll make a change in app.xaml one more time. So we will be showing window 3.xaml to the end user. Now what I'm going to do is we already have here in the code behind. So in this project in window 1, we already had this employee class object. So we inherited it from dependency object if you recall. And this is going to be part of the same namespace 00, 00 demo. So instead of we using dependency property here, as we discussed, we will be using the inotify property change based employee. So I'm going to uncomment this, so on. So we have one employee class which is implementing inotify property change. Then specifically for the purpose of uh, reusability and so-called readability, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this class from here and I'm going to add a new class file. So let me add one CS file. Let's name it as emp.cs and then let's add class employee code into it. Obviously, inotify property change requires system dot component model. So let's use a using system dot component model. This will bring inotify property change. Now, just like we handled inotify property change or property change for name, similar way we will have to handle this for age as well. So in the age set method, I'll try to put this code and make sure that age change is going to one represent. Uh, the change in UI as well. Now if you notice these things are very common like every time I have to check the property change and then I have to raise the event and then I have to simply keep on changing the property name over here. So if this is going to be repetitive for all the properties why not we just go and write down a method for this. So instead of we copying and pasting the code imagine we write one private method which returns void and let's call it as property changed. And this particular method or raise property change, I'll call it as. So raise property changed, which will take a parameter which is going to be property name. So we will just check if property change is not null. And then instead of hard coding age over here, I will pass on the property name. So now what we'll do is whenever there is a check required and raise required, we will pass on here age property needs to be raised. Here also, instead of we doing all these things, three lines of code, I'm going to give a call to raise property changed and I will pass on a parameter which is going to be name in this case. So all done. So we have name, we have age. Similar way, I'll take one more property which is going to be photo of the person. So imagine the scene here, we will have photo over here and that photo will have a photo member. So I'm going to copy this, paste it here and let's name it as photo. Same way, just like name raise change we did, I'll put here underscore photo and here also we will set up underscore photo. Then we will try to raise a photo change has happened and then that will change in the UI as well. So almost three properties we have written and then we have inotify property change. Now one more time, I need a way to get these employees. So I need to define multiple number of employees in a collection and get the collection uh, which we need to bind with window 3. So in window 3, let's say here, I need to assign this dot data context equal to and I need to assign some collection of employees which I don't have. So as of now, I set it to null and then I'm going to declare list of employee over here. So let's say EMP equal to null initially. And then as and when window 3 gets initialized, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to initialize EMPS collection to new list of employees over here. Let's keep on adding couple of employees into it. So let's add a name of the employee. Let's add it as Mahesh. Let's add photo or age of the employee, let's say 40. And let's add here photo of the employee. Let's call it as emp1.jpg. 
over here. I don't have these photos as of now, but then we will just add the names or add the image path. So first employee is Mahesh, next employee is Nilesh, third employee is let's say Sripad, fourth employee is going to be let's say Manohar. And then we will try to set up values over here. So age for Nilesh is 30, Sripad is like 20, and Manohar is like 60. And then we will have employee 1, 2, 3, 4 values here. Now this collection is something which should act as a source. So I'm going to specify EMPS. Keep it in mind, sometime back we have set up data context as in single employee object. But now I'm trying to set up here a collection. Now what I'm going to do in window 3, if I just go and try to specify that I need to showcase employee collection over here. Keep it in mind, sometime back there was simple text box. But text box was representing only name or one text box represents only age. I really want the multiple number of elements to be displayed here. So we don't need a single control. We need a control which ultimately presents a collection. So one more time, I'm going to take the stack panel and then in a stack panel, I will use not text box, but I will use list box over here. I'll name this list box as list of employees. Height, I'll put a 400 and width, I'll put a 400 over here. Now, again, one more time. Here, in case of text box, we use text property to set up name. Text property will be binding with age. But in case of this box, how do I go and show up all the content? So I'm going to specify here, this box has item source, and I'm going to specify go and bind yourself with. Obviously, what I need over here is I need a property, but then I don't have a property, which is going to be a collection property. Keep it in mind, sometime back there was path here in text box and there was name over here. Right now it is items source, it is S, items source. And I need a property here, which will automatically come from something which is called as this EMPS collection. But ultimately EMPS is just a collection. It can give you a property called as dot length, which means just like employee did emit name and age, EMPS will emit at the max something called as maybe count at the max. Maybe it can give me something called as max value as in method, but then it doesn't give me all employees at once. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go and tell here, that is I'm not going to bind it with any path because none of the path from this collection, which is acting as a data context, is eligible for acting as item source. So I'm just going to specify item source is equal to binding. So ultimately what will happen is, it will not look for any property now, it will look for the object itself. So the entire object itself will be acting as a source. So instead of I'm looking for a prop path over here, the entire object which is specified as data context is going to come act as a source of items right now. Okay, how will it represent? Let's see, if I run this code, you will notice what it does is, it represents everything in the form of object names like this. This is fully qualified name. So what is it that has happened? List box is meant to show you list of strings and unfortunately, what has happened is, I'm binding collection of employees. So each employee object is applied with dot to string method. The data is collected automatically as in string. So object dot to string will always give you fully qualified name of the object. And that is this 00 demo dot EMP that we have. So multiple number of employee objects ultimately converted into dot uh, string using dot to string. We'll find out the UI representation looks like this here, but I am really not in, uh, uh, you know, need of representing employees like this. I really wanted to show the name of the employee and photos of the employee. So here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a small change in the UI. So I specified here, this box should show me collection, but then how each of the objects should be represented as so. In WPF, we have one better option. We can specify the list box has something called as item template. How each of the item, each of the object in the collection can be represented. And that is going to be data bound kind of, we can say presentation. So I'll say data template. So every object I need to represent in the form of stack panel. Again, stack panel is typically vertical. So I really want to represent each of the object, each of the employee in a horizontal manner. So I'll specify the orientation 
is going to be horizontal here and then in the stack panel every time i need to represent employee's name it should be a text box representing that name so i'll put here txt name every time there will be height there will be width like 200 and each time the text will be presented using some path which is called as name so every object will be represented as a stack panel and that stack panel will have text box each text box will represent that objects dot name employee object dot name will close this similar way there can be one more which is going to be photo so for the purpose of photo we will have image shown here so let's say image and image has a name here let's call it as photo then we'll have height we will have a width and then we will have a source of the image which i'm going to go and bind it with a path called as photo so it's just going to be path called as something.jpg then one more thing we can represent age as well but then if you recall some time back in one of the session we tried to rotate the control by the angle so i'm going to specify the image needs to render itself and rotate itself by the angle and then i'm going to bind here the angle which is going to be a path called as age so employees image or employees photo will be tilted automatically by the age property value over here now let's see what happens if i run this code obviously we don't have a photo available right now so in the ui you will see the xbox representation is there photos are not visible because photos are yet to be there into the application so what we are going to do we are going to add photos over here so we don't have photo so let me add photos in the current project so what i have done is i have added emp1234 uh, some sample photos and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to run the application when we run this you will notice that images are going to be there and these images are tilted based on the age property of the respective employees and now what i'm going to do is i am just going to make sure that we keep on removing one employees at a time so in case of windows 3.xaml what i'll do is after this first stack panel or outer stack panel uh, after list box rather let me have one button added and that button will have btn remove then i'll have height then i'll add width then i'll add some content on top of it let's call it as remove and on click of this button i'm going to write down some event handler let's close this button and navigate to the event handler so here what i wish to do is every time I, I i click on the button i would like to remove the employee from the collection so i will say emps dot remove and i'll say remove at zeroth position so one employee at a zeroth position is what i need to remove let us see what happens now if i run this application one more time so what happens here is if i click on remove button now here see i clicked nothing happened second nothing happened i try to change the source is it even reflecting in the source let me put a breakpoint here and show you third time i'll click it hits this button it executes the code and notice now emps has got only one object left which means the collection is changing the data source is changing but unfortunately that data source is not reflecting in the ui but then we already have like if i click here on the button again i have removed all the element fifth time if i click i'll end up in exception and that is something which is index out of range because i'm trying to remove something from the collection as the collection is all empty so why this thing happened why did not it reflect into the ui in the first place there is a reason why it, it did not uh, what we call it as we did not see the change in the ui there's a reason behind it we did not see it in the ui the reason was was it was it like emp was not implementing i notify emp is implementing i notify but did we do the change in case of individual employee no we did the change in case of collection so whenever collection changed the ui did not change and collection was acting as a data context not individual emps as such so any change in the collection did not reflect the change in the ui because who is at fault is again source is at fault and who is the source 
right now